Hey guys, it's Melanie Ham. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be starting a little two-part series on machine binding your quilt. I really wanted to master a better way to do machine binding so that it's easy and it has a really great result. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next two videos. So the first video, this one right here, is going to be how to prep your strips for binding because I don't want to just launch into how to do the machine binding. I want you to know how to get your strips ready and do the bias join, which is what we need to do for machine binding. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to attach that strip onto your quilt with the machine binding method, okay? If you need to know how much fabric to get, um, I have the formula all kind of like written out really nicely on my blog. So the link for that will be down below. It'll tell you exactly how to calculate how much binding you need, how many strips that you need. A lot of times when you are following along with the pattern though, you already know how much you need. So I don't want to take up too much time with that. So let's jump in. I'm going to show you how to cut and sew together, and prep your binding strips before we machine bind it to our quilts. All right, so here's the yardage that I will be cutting my binding from. So whether it's a solid or a print, doesn't matter. And if you've already made your quilt, you probably have a little bit of an idea of what you're gonna do here, but we're gonna cut two and a half inch strips. I like two and a half inch strips. It's a pretty standard size for binding. Some people like thinner. Um, I think I've seen thicker too, but two and a half is a really good size. And sometimes I'll use leftover jelly roll strips for bindings, um, especially for scrappy bindings and things like that. So it's, it's a good measurement. I'm using my two and a half, lining everything up. I've got my line going all the way across the bottom. Make sure I have a 90 degree angle. We're including that line. So the, the two and a half inch mark is on top of our fabric, not on top of our mats. So we always wanna include that line and then we'll cut. So if you're following a pattern, you already know exactly how many strips that you need or check out my blog post. I'll put it up at the eye and that will have the calculation for you, um, especially that calculation for the bias join. So let's go into how you're gonna join them together. So you'll you cut as many strips as you need and then we're gonna do a bias join, which I'll show you what that means. So in order to do a bias join, you need a smaller ruler. You need a marking tool like a friction pen or a chalk pen or a water saw pen whatever you want to use and a pin or two you don't need a ton this is gonna be our right side so I'm gonna mark on this just so that you guys can see right side so if you're looking at a piece of fabric this is your right side this is your wrong side so if you're using a printed fabric that is really important for this step so when you're using solids it's harder to tell on camera so I want to reiterate that so this is our right side and our right side and those need to touch you really don't need to worry about cutting off that selvage because we'll do that now. You can cut it off ahead of time if you want to. Certainly nothing wrong with that. I don't bother since I can do it right at this step. So that's why it's coming off the edge. If this was a clean cut, then we would line it up like this. But we don't want to include any selvage in our seam because that selvage area is not as good a quality fabric. So we need to trim that off. Right, so now we need to make a diagonal line and we're gonna make a diagonal line from these outer corners, not from this intersection this way. Okay, if you do it this way, it's not gonna turn out right and you're gonna to have to rip it out. Okay, so make sure that you're doing it from outer corner to outer corner. So we're gonna line up our ruler and make a mark. I like these friction pens because they are iron off and it's also a very thin line, so I like that about it. And we'll put a quick little pin we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and just sew a straight line directly on top of that line. Here's our stitched line directly on top of that marked line that we made. We can take our pin out and then we need to trim it. So we are gonna take our ruler and we're gonna mark one quarter of an inch to the side of that stitch so that we have a nice seam allowance. Okay, so I've got my quarter inch line lined up with that stitch and then I will trim it off. And see, that's why I don't bother even trimming off that selvage because it doesn't, we don't need to. Now there's these little dog ears that are coming off the side so we can trim those off too. There we 
there we go. That will be our bias join. And the reason why we like the bias join, especially for machine binding, is because if we were to have a straight grain, that's gonna be right on top of each other. So then when you go to sew across it, there's gonna be up to you know four layers that the machine is going over and it can have a little bit of a discrepancy. So that seam allowance gets spread apart across the quilt, allowing for a smoother finish on your binding. Also, if you cut it at a diagonal like this, a lot of times, especially with printed fabric, it really hides that seam really well. Okay, so we're gonna finish doing those joins for all of our binding. We're gonna get a nice long strip and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I'm gonna prep my binding strip to attach it to our quilt. The way I like to do it is we need to press the seams open. So this would be the wrong side. So the wrong sides go together so that our right sides are showing. And I actually, I, I like my binding strip starched. I like to have it nice and stiff so we're gonna fold it in half and then we're gonna press. I have heard some people say it's good to not press your binding and to attach it to your quilt without it having this crease. I have not found that to be true. I don't care for that. <laughs> I found like, I felt that it was difficult to work with that way and it didn't achieve a, a better result. Don't forget we need to press our seams open. Okay, so go ahead and finish prepping your binding strip. You don't have to starch it. You can experiment as you're making quilts with both starch and with non-starch. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish starching and pressing my binding strip. And one of the optional things that I like to start with now that my quilt is squared and it's ready to go is zigzag or serge the outside edge. Now this is optional, I often skip this step, but when you're first learning how to machine bind, I feel like it could be a step you might wanna include. Especially on mine here where I have this edge that could kind of come up and get in the way a little bit. I'm going to zigzag it just so that we can have this super nice clean edge, make it really simple and easy for us to attach our binding. Um, a serger works really great with this if you have one. I have one. I'm not going to pull that whole thing out just for this quilt. If you want to, go ahead and zigzag around your entire squared quilt. Got our binding ready to go. Our quilt is zigzagged. Now what I like to do is attach the binding on the back. So the method that we're doing is sewing it onto the back. So here's my backing, bringing it around to the front and then sewing it to the front. I like to pin it or actually clip it to the back all the way around because I want to ensure that there are no joins or any seams happening in the corners. So I start on one of the long edges. So this is a long side and we need to leave a good amount of a tail and starting in about the middle somewhere, I will start clipping. You can go 10, 12 inches in between each one. It doesn't need to be a lot. We're sort of just marking it. Okay, so like here's my seam and I know that it's not gonna happen on my corner. It will just create too much bulk and your corners won't have that nice kind of crisp mitered edge if there's a seam in there. So that's why we do this. All right, so go ahead and go all the way around. If you do have the, a, a seam that happens on your corner, start further down where you, know, where you started to, that way it kind of adjusts where the seam ends up. Okay, when you get to the corner, this is how you clip it. So it's gonna come off the edge then we're gonna rotate it so that there's a diagonal fold. This is not a huge deal to get it perfect here. We're just making sure we have enough space on the corners and that it gives us a good idea of how that's gonna work out for the rest of the quilts. So it's basically like this. So that's how you would fold it for the corners. So let's get our whole quilt clipped.